checkered flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your NASCAR betting and DFS home. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me, live from Las Vegas, is Brian Twining. Brian, we are recording this mere, what, 12 hours from heading to the track to to watch some NASCAR playoffs in person. Um, I couldn't be more hyped. How's it going? Oh, dude, I'm freaking ecstatic. We have some interesting things we're going to be able to check out tomorrow. Uh, I am absolutely loving our plays that we already made earlier in the week after practice and qualifying took yep. place. And I'm excited to dive into the DFS today because there are some interesting prices going on. Yeah, please follow us on Twitter um, as well as at FPAOP on Twitter uh, for the show. We will try and share out a bunch of stuff as we kind of go around. Uh, hopefully get some cool like uh, shots of we're going to be well, hopefully walking around the garage and kind of behind the scenes and stuff. So very, very excited for tomorrow. Uh, got to spend the whole day kind of hanging out in the sports book, watching college football all day. So that was very exciting. Uh, but yeah, Brian, like you mentioned, we are here to talk DraftKings and update our betting card uh, with qualifying in the book. So let's talk some DraftKings. Let's show the people the pricing and let's build some build us a lineup so interesting day um couple names at the top who did not perform super well at uh qualifying but could be incredibly popular as we head into sunday so denny hamlin was the uh big time favorite it's now starting 31st he will be eleven thousand one hundred. Uh, we also have Christopher Bell starting tw- or Chase Elliott rather starting twentieth at ten seven. Christopher Bell starting seventh at ten five. Kyle Larson at ten three no. starting fourteenth. Uh, and your pole sitter Tyler Reddick ten one. Um, I-, I guess of this elite group, what are your thoughts and and who is potentially um, going to be finding a home in the lineup for you? Well, I, I mean, it's really interesting to see Denny Hamlin qualify 31st at a track that he has done pretty good at and coming into the week as the favorite. So I think that's definitely going to be somebody to monitor going into Sunday. And maybe they're kind of playing coy a little bit as to how strong they actually think their car is. So, I mean, he's probably going to have a really high uh, roster percentage and probably somebody if you're trying to get frisky in a in a big gpp lineup you are going to want to stay away from so i think yeah. like elliot again makes sense starting 20th um but he'll probably have a pretty high roster ship and then christopher bell again proving that this guy comes in week in week out qualifies really well is expected to run really well his outright is a great indication of that and so i feel like those top three guys like you're going to go one way or the other with them but i feel hamlin is the most that you're, you're either going to want to stay away from completely or build all of your lineups around. Yeah, and I do wonder like if we can build a Hamlin-Elliott lineup that we actually like. We are able to squeeze both those guys in. Um, I also think Kyle Larson's really interesting. I know it's been a rough go for him. Even, um, you know, we'll get into some other names that we dip below there, but um, looks looks compelling, really good at the mile and a half. Starting 14th, seems like he could be interesting. And if you're fading Hamlin, might be an interesting way to go if you want to get uh, real unique. As we yeah, dive very, into very the – as we dive below 10K, we have a few names that are really interesting. My guy, Ross Chastain, starting 11th and 9-9. Your guy, Willie B., William Byron, starting 3rd at 9,700. Your other guy, Ryan Blaney, starting 4th <laughs> at 9,500. Uh, Kyle Busch starting 18th, 9,300 is going to be incredibly compelling. Uh, Truex had another rough day starting 27th as we finish out the 9K range. Um, You know, if we skip kind of the initial group, this could be a good range to kind of grab a couple guys. Obviously, you have uh, potential early dominators in Byron and Blaney, plus potential values in Busch and Truex. Um, and you know, uh, I still like Ross Chastain a lot. I think he can actually win the race. So what are your thoughts kind of on this range as a whole and who, who makes the most sense for you? Well, I mean, three of these guys I have outrights on coming into Sunday. So, I mean, um, it 
that definitely is a good indication of what I thought about them coming into the week. But I, I feel as if like a guy like Chastain starting 11th, if you really want to get away from like a Denny Hamlin um, or a Chase Elliott, I, I would prefer to go down the him as opposed to taking a Kyle Larson starting 14th. I know Larson is, you know, track record per se. He's probably better than Chastain, but still being in the fight, I think will have a major effect between those two guys this weekend. And then I, I can't help but continue to love Blaney. Like I still feel he's going to get a victory at some point this season. And we only have three races left. So I mean, what yeah. better race than this start it here in Las Vegas? How wild would it be for him to not win a race all season, somehow end up in the final four and win the championship on the final race? I think that would probably be the most unlikely yet amazing thing to happen in NASCAR yeah. in quite some time. Uh, we'll dip uh, below the 9K range as we have some interesting names to dive into. Joey Logano starting fifth at 8,900. Bubba Wallace qualified pretty well inside that top 10 at 8,700. Obviously, no Alex Bowman this week. Uh, we have Kevin Harvick at 83. We have Chase Briscoe at 81. Of the four names there, I, I, you know, this this feels like a range where if you wanted just to completely skip it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if you do take someone from this range, who are you taking? <sighs> I mean, again, it's gross. Like Logano, the Penske cars looked great. Practice and qualifying Fords, Fords were pretty strong. Um, I mean, if you're unlike me and you you like fading him or you're you want to fade Ryan Blaney, I can't fault you for going to Logano. But uh, we we talked about it earlier in the week. Chase Briscoe is a guy who he seems to kind of pop up every time we think he's we're going to count him out or we're going to fade him. He seems to perform pretty well. And during practice and qualifying, like I said, Fords looked pretty strong. So Briscoe is a guy starting 16th at only 8,100 who could make some sense this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that makes sense. Um, and you know, we, he's been someone we kind of trying to find a way to fade, but I think this week could be a week to jump on him um, and could make some sense. Uh, we'll that dip below 8k. We have a few interesting names. We also have some guys who performed really well. So we have Daniel Suarez at 7,900 starting sixth. We have Austin Sindrick, who popped up and got second um, and is 77. Austin Dillon starting 10th at 7,500. I think Noah Gragson starting 17th at 7,300 in uh, Alex Bowman's car makes a lot of sense. It'd be really interesting. Our guy Chris Busher rebounded nicely starting 12th, yep. 7,200. And Eric Jones, who was crazy fast but couldn't put down the lap uh, to start near the front, but that could end up working out for DraftKings um at a 7100 what are your thoughts on that range oh well let's just start from the bottom here and work our way up eric jones starting 22nd 7100 he had the third fastest time in practice um i feel like he's a guy over the long run here he could put together a really good race finish inside the top 10 and i mean he's probably going to be rostered a ton coming into this week but at only 7100 for at least 10 placement points i think he's a guy that's going to find his way on our on our rosters pretty prevalently Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he makes sense, especially at a mile and a half that runs this fast. He he is a guy that tends the faster the track goes, the faster everything gets going, um, the better he does. So I think he makes sense. Like I said, I like Gregson starting 17th. Um, you know, you'll never hurt, hurt Brian and I if you want to try and squeeze Chris Busher into your lineup no. starting 12th. And I honestly, like if you're going to start with the expensive guys at the top, especially if you want to go Hamlin, Elliot Larson, uh, starting with uh, Austin Cindric as your dominator could make a lot of sense. Um, you know, very affordable, um, you know, has good performances. Obviously, we talked about how impressive the Fords have been. Um, I think he could have a nice day and, and dominate from the jump and have some nice early, early uh, laps, even if he doesn't finish near the front, um, you know, come the end of the race. Uh, as we dip below 7K, we have some uh, names to discuss, including your favorite, Brad Keselowski, starting 25th, 6,900. Eric Almarola, starting 23rd at 6,700. Ty Gibbs, starting 19th at 66. Full-timer Dinger the Ringer, yeah. starting 21st at 64. Uh, Michael McDowell, starting 15th, just far enough back where at 6,200 you could squint and see a a path to him making a ton of sense. Um, and Ricky Stevenhouse Jr. 
Um, 6K is just a cross off for me. Uh, Stenhouse is not even on your on your radar, huh? Starting 29th at 6K. That's such a good salary savings. Um, it- sure. Yeah. If you get credit for <laughs> spinning out, credit for popping a tire and credit for finishing 30 laps down. Yeah, no, I I think that's a good call there. I'll still I'll still uh, ride with my seven to one top ten as you'll see later. I bet earlier in the week, but um, Michael McDowell starting fifteenth. He's a guy who's ran it really impressively as we're coming to the back half of this season and closing out twenty twenty two. He's yeah he he's never top ten here in Las Vegas and his best finish is actually seventeenth. But this is a guy who has I think like a average finish of thirteenth over the last six ovals. Coming into this weekend, he has an average finish of 11th at the all intermediates this year. So it's like, I'm pretty sure McDowell is a guy who could easily get into the top 10. And at 6,200, starting 15th, he's probably going to be someone that is not rostered very much because that starting position is going to scare some people away, I think. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a good call. And if you want to go a little with a little more chalk, he could be a nice pivot um that could make some sense and obviously you save some salary as well um as we round out the rest of the group we have cole custer starting 24th uh 5900 justin haley 28th at 58 ty dillon at 30 starting 33rd at 56 harrison burton qualifying in the top 10 at 5400 i think is a cross off for a lot of people the gilly gang starting 35th 5200 landon castle corey joy bj mcleod Cody Ware, JJ Yaley, anybody in here where if you are like, I'm going to go with a bunch of scrubs, uh, I'm going to go, you know, stars and scrubs. I need to get a couple of these guys in your lineup. What, who's interesting to you? I, I think, I think Haley is somebody that's really popping at only 5,800. He's somebody that's been able to put together good races in the past. He's starting 28th and this is probably one of his lowest salaries we've seen in some time for him at a higher speed type track that he's traditionally been somebody that has been like a betting favorite at. So I think he's somebody that makes a ton of sense. And then Gilliland starting 35th, I think, I mean, $5,200, like I know he didn't look great during practice and qualifying. I mean, he ran okay in practice, but he's not in the worst of equipment. So I think he could, he's somebody that, I mean, if you get five placement points out of him, you get a top 30 at that cost at 5,200. He's somebody that you could just pencil in there and you know you're getting a safe amount of points and you're hoping your other guys pop at the top. Yeah, and I'm looking at ifantasyrace.com at their speed rankings for mile and a half. And Haley is a guy that's, you know, obviously not done amazing, but been super duper consistent, been, you know, 24th fastest. Could he be a guy that, you know, moves up just enough to get you a top 20-ish finish and you're pretty happy to have them in your lineup? I think that makes sense. Um, you know, Gillen could make some sense if you can get him into, you know, even if it's just a couple, get him inside that top 30, maybe even inside the top 25, feel pretty good about it. Um, yeah. And, you know, LaJoy is always someone I kind of lean on, but it just, it, it does, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not super optimistic about him this week. So Brian Twining, with that said, do we want to try and squeeze in Hamlin and Elliot? and and see what we can do with the rest of our lineup or should we just cross them off and start uh beyond them i maybe we build two we try to we try to put squeeze in both of the the guys that are going to be heavily heavily rostered let's start with those two and see what we can get done from there so hamlin and elliot i think what i mentioned earlier makes sense we go down to cindric we get an early dominator go with that 7700 um, and then we keep it rolling. So I think we... from there, my, my next play personally would be Eric Jones. Okay. Cause I'm he's somebody who could pop and he's, he's, I mean, he's let's not salary saving, but let's go. We both seem to like, uh, we both seem to like Justin Haley enough at 5,800 where we get up to 7,600. Um, so that gets us Austin Dillon. That gets us Noah Gragson, who I kind of like, um, that gets us Chris Busher, who maybe can make up some room and get up and dominate some early laps. I think with this lineup, we're hoping that Elliot and Hamlin, at least by stage two, yeah, um, are, are in the conversation for for leading laps. So maybe we don't have to worry about that. So um, of of kind of the names, I mean, 
you you've liked him all week. I'm not a, like I said, I'm not a huge fan, but Ricky Recky spin out starting 29th <laughs> at 6K. Um, as we look to you know be a little bit different, could make some sense as well. I, well, I guess if you had if you had an A and a B pick, who would be your who would be first? Who would be second? For me, I would go Stenhouse just because I think, like, I mean, it, there's not much room for him to get, get worse. I mean, essentially, you're just hoping he finishes the race, even if it's a couple lap down, a couple laps down at that yeah. salary. But I feel like if you're trying to get a little bit safer with a guy who could potentially garner more points, I think that would be Michael McDowell starting 15th because he's not. I, I really think that that 15th um, starting grid position is going to turn some people away. Yeah. I think McDowell is definitely safer, but uh, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, trust your guns. Go with spinouts. Uh, when he takes the lineup, I can completely blame you. So I will save that lineup. <laughs> uh, I will go back in and create another one, and we can avoid the upper elite guys and see what uh, what we do, and then we'll figure out which one we like more. Uh, as always, I will try and enter both. Uh, we'll see what DraftKings lets us do out here in Vegas, but uh, I think I'll be able to get them in. We'll see. All right, so we're skipping Hamlin. We're skipping Elliott. Who is the first name you want to squeeze into this lineup? I, I'm going to go – for me, it would be Ryan Blaney. I, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's got to win a race. I don't understand how we've gone this long throughout this season and his standing currently in the playoffs, and he has not won a race yet. Yep. Uh, I am going to go with Kyle Busch. I think he will perform really well. Obviously, it's his home track. Obviously, he's had a good run. The last month or two have not been great to him, but I think he could have a nice performance, outperform his 18th spot, and potentially even win this thing. So um, I I like him quite a bit. (sighs) All right, all right. So if we're going to stay in this range, I think Larson makes sense. I think Truex could make some sense. Um, I was going to say, let's let's get frisky. Let's go. I Briscoe starting 16th, 8,100. We go a little bit further down the board. Okay. All right. So we have Blaney. We have Bush. We have Briscoe. Um, once again, we're ending up in this range where I think Eric Jones makes some sense. I think Austin Sindrick. I think uh, Gregson. This could be a spot where we actually go Michael McDowell because he is a little safer and we've already kind of punted on the yeah. um, the the kind of upper echelon guys. I was going to say think- from, from here, I was going to say just to add uh, a Chevy in here, like we'll get some exposure to Hendrick. I think Gragson starting 17th, um, just okay. go with both, both Las Vegas guys, Gragson and Kyle Busch to potentially perform really well at their home tracks. Yeah. I might skip McDowell, but we'll see. Um, just because I want guy, I don't want to load up on the midfield. So let's take McDowell out. Let's go. We have eight K. So my my thinking is either we go Truex and dive down, or we go with a combination of like the Eric's or Keslowski or. Well, you know me with Keslowski. I you love him and you have a big poster <laughs> above your bed. I know. Uh, I will say so. Almarola, he performed pretty well in practice. He had the sixth fastest single lap in practice. He ran twenty two laps, so he had a good, a decent amount of time on the track to get a feel for what it was going to be like later okay. in the year. So he might be somebody that's kind of flying under the radar. Okay, put him in. Uh, we still have ninety one hundred. Does that get us? Yep, that gets us to Truex. I want to put Truex in and call it a day. I think that makes sense. I feel better about where our lineup's at. And I still like the upside quite a bit. And I think Blaney could dominate. This could be a lineup where Blaney gets out early, dominates a lot of the the race, and just is that guy you need. He gets 100 and something DraftKings points, and everybody else is just along for the ride. And you know I would not hate that. So Nope, I do. I do know that for a fact. So uh, I am saving that now. Let's take a quick peek at our current betting card. Uh, I have two outrights, Ross Chastain, Kyle Busch, uh, nine and a half at 12. Um, I have a top 10 on Eric Jones, top 10 on Eric Almarola, 
I went Logano over Elliott, Logano over Bubba, Ross over Denny, uh, Kyle Busch over Truex, Briscoe over Byron, and Kyle Busch is the top Toyota at 5-1. to one. Brian has Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, and William Byron outright. He also has Eric Jones top 10, Spinhouse top 10 at 7-1, to one. Riddell top 10 at 7-1, to one. Kyle Busch over Martin Truex, and Willie B as the top Chevy. With that being said, let's look at the odds as they sit now. Uh, you can get El, uh, Denny as low as nine to one, which is a nice price. Um, I, st- I feel like like there's th- like the fact that he's starting thirty first. If you if you liked him coming into this week, you can get a better number. I think you need to jump on it. Yeah, I mean it shouldn't it shouldn't scare you away where he's starting because we have so, there's two hundred and sixty seven laps here, and the last time we ran here, we had a ton of cautions. So I mean. Even if he were to go a lap down early, say there was something that happened, yeah. he could find his way back onto the lead lap and potentially win the race at the end. So it's not something to be scared away from. Yep. Uh, Chastain shortened a little bit at some spots, a lot at other spots. Interesting. See him 650 at Caesars. Still like him quite a bit. I think if you can get eight or eight to one or better, uh, you can definitely do that. Uh, your guy Blaney is a short price. Once again, Six to one, seven to one. I'm not. I don't love it as much, but if you can get no. the eight to one at FanDuel, um, I think it's a good price. See, I as much as I think Blaney has a shot to win this week, it'd be really hard to get to that eight to one number knowing that he hasn't been able to cash that victory. So I mean, like jumping on it earlier in the week, I feel great, but I don't yeah. know if I would get there even after practice or qualifying because he's had so many issues in the race. Yeah, no, that's completely fair. Uh, Tyler Reddick, seven to nine, uh, Christopher Bell kind of in the, as we get in towards double digit range, um, Larson's around 11 to 12. I think it's a fine price. He was closer to, I think 13 or 14, but earlier in the week. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's fine. He's, he's just somebody that's been difficult this year. It just has not been his year. Uh, Chase Elliott. Interesting. Uh, yeah. William Byron. I was going to say, I could definitely go back to Bell considering I took it at eight, eight to one earlier in the week. Like I like his yeah. number of double digits, but yeah, I mean, I'm already invested in four guys. So 11. yeah. Yeah. So if you like Christopher Bell, you have a major investment yet. Uh, Brian and I co-signed that, you know, find to go back to him and get back on the wagon with him as they say. Um, Keep it rolling. Kyle Busch uh, down is at 12 to 1. What did I get him at? I think um, we got him at 12. I got him at 12, so I'm very yeah. happy to go back to that. Uh, Logano looks good. I know Brian hates him, but uh, he's been fast. He looks solid. Um, the Fords have been fast, so 10 to 1, 11 to 1 on him is, is a pretty nice price. Um, and then we take a big jump as we get into the 20 to 1 range. Um, any of these kind of longer shots that are kind of interesting to you, Brian? I I mean, we've talked about him on numerous occasions now over the past few weeks, but Bubba Wallace is somebody who's driving a lot better than we had ever seen him in the past, especially yep. on tracks that he hadn't normally performed well at, but it's just hard to get to him at a 20 or 25 to one at a track that we've never seen him have that kind of, you know, potential or performance yeah. at. So like, it, I think the number is a little bit too short. For him, he, I would prefer him to be more in like the 30 range. And then Harvick, no, he's he's done. Suarez, I think, is somebody that's intriguing at 25 or 30 to 1 at FanDuel. Yeah. Like, if you can get 37. I oh, think 37, yeah. I think that's a good number. I'm, I'm a little more optimistic on Bubba just because I know once you get that win, especially at a track like this, it's going to be hard to get. Like, you're not going to see that number. Um, yeah, true. But I do, I definitely get where you're coming from. But it wasn't like... It was nice to see him perform today. And I think it makes sense. Um, I don't know why Alex Bowman's still listed. Uh, <laughs> Sindrick at 37, I think, makes some sense. Uh, Briscoe at 36, I don't hate. Or 40, if you can get it. Like, I feel like he's a lot better than kind of the Austin Dillon, Eric Jones, Noah Gragson. Hey, don't, don't be putting that... Uh... That negativity on our guy, Eric Jones, okay? Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, Eric Jones at 65 to 1, like, I mean, even even a very small wager, 
on that. Like he's mm-hmm. somebody who we've seen lead races late in the day, which I mean, the likelihood of him finishing in, in the front is not very good, but even for a small investment, just to make your day more entertaining. I mean, it is Vegas. Yep. Get him there. See what happens. Um, I kind of like Gregson just because of the car he's in, but um, I don't know. I Busher is somebody that number should not be that that long. Yeah, especially like he didn't qualify horribly. Like he's exactly he's sitting close enough to the front where that's kind of crazy. So, um, you know, me and Brian once again, you know, twist our arm to 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 <laughs> talk up some Christopher Busher. Uh, Al Marol even at a hundred to one, I think, could make some sense. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that. So. Uh, I'm assuming this number is live because we're recording this pretty late on Saturday night. Uh, yeah. If Busher at 150 to one at BetMGM, like that is going to go on my card. Okay. Make it happen. Brian is, we are in Vegas. The Vegas bug has gotten to him and all the outrights are coming to Brian's card. Uh, my card has been a bloodbath this week. So I'm trying to show some, um, some pause, some patience and not overindulge, but you know, we'll see. Michael it's McDowell, Sin City, man. You got to get crazy. Michael McDowell, <laughs> 300 to one, 300 to one. As I, I know, say, but... I'm going to show some patience. <laughs> I get a 300 to one. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily think he's like any sort of lock to win the race, but my God. Yeah, those numbers are pretty. Oh, okay. Here's one for you. Bet MGM. Okay, I got I got to check this real quick before I start throwing these out there. But Bet MGM has Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I know, extreme long shot, five hundred to one. Yeah. Can you bet Ricky Stenhouse to win, but also bet him to not finish the race? Because that like feels like a good bet. I wish we had those props at the at the here at the the forty eight books. Yeah. I mean, only offshores offer that kind of weird stuff, but there would definitely be a large market for that if they started offering those props. Yeah, I think. But I but, but honestly, I don't think NASCAR would be okay with books offering props on guys to wreck. So mm. yeah, I'm, well, I'm just saying not to finish. Like, he could have an issue with the tire. He could get brad keselowski like there's lots of ways that could go wrong uh let's look at the matchups and see if we can't find some interesting numbers uh william byron at minus 225 feels a little aggressive um briscoe plus 185 do we have any interest getting there Hmm, i have briscoe over byron at minus 185 already so clearly i'm interested yeah, but I think with the number getting getting a little bit closer, I don't know if I'd be that interested. Because Byron mm-hmm. is somebody who I'm expecting to run really strong this weekend, and I feel like his his like top top finishing position is much better than what Briscoe's is. Yeah, Brian so is even frozen. If, his face is frozen, but his audio is coming through, so we'll <laughs> just keep it rolling. Yeah, at least I don't have a goofy ass look on my face. Oh no, you definitely do, but it's okay. Oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> hey, it's Vegas. I, I I could be completely shit faced right now. So Vegas, baby. Uh, I got some nice value on my. What was what was the one I had? Ross Chastain over. Uh, tr- tr- it was Chastain I, over Hamlin, I believe. Yeah, I Ross versus Denny, right there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus yeah, one forty. Ky- Kyle forgot to add the boss in his. Yeah, yeah. Where's the uh, Ross versus Denny thing on here? I wonder if they took that off the board. It's like we're missing some. And yeah, so I just double checked the uh, the BetMGM numbers, and Stenhouse is actually two hundred and fifty to one. Lay it. Uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely doing. I'm doing all for a quarter unit. I mean, why not? Why not? Um, any top tens we want to try and get in before, uh, we call our, we, we give people a best bet and get the hell out of here. I don't really feel like the market moved very much in like our favor for certain guys mm-hmm. that. Truex at minus 125 is kind of interesting. 
Um, Bob at minus 110. Still being able to get a minus 120, get a plus 125 on Cindric is pretty insane. That's crazy considering where he ran both practice and qualifying. Yeah, I'm going to add that. Plus money. Let's fucking go. I was just going to say, I feel like we talked him up on the on the DK section. So I'm going to go all the way down the board. Justin Haley is 9-1 to one at BetMGM and, and FanDuel, the top 10. So, I mean, I got to add it to the card. We talked about him. We have him on DK. Let's go all in on it, on Haley. Do it. Do it. Do it. Get your boy spin outs at 6. Well, you got him at 7, so you're good. Yeah, I got him at 7, so I'm not going back to the well with that. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Or you want to? Should we review the card? Give the people a best bet and get the hell out of here. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm good. I, I might have some additions tomorrow. I don't know. Kyle and I are going to be busy at the track, so I, I don't yeah. know how much we'll, we're going to be. We'll, we'll at the tweet them out if we're going to add them to the card. Once again, make sure you're following. If you are making it this far, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done yet. We would love to get to 500 subs by the end of the NASCAR season. Once again, we will be tweeting out uh, all kinds of stuff, including nuggets, including pictures and all the stuff, as we will be live at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. If you are there today, uh, as you will be watching this on Sunday, please come say hello if you see us. We'd love to say hello, uh, buy you a beer, shake your hand, whatever it may be. Uh, Brian Twining, my cards consist of Ross Chastain and Kyle Busch. Trying to hold myself from getting one more outright, but it might happen. Uh, oh, no, I added Michael McDowell at 300 to 1 for a quarter unit because <laughs> why not? Uh, my top 10s include Eric Jones at 3 to 1, Almarola at 3 to 1, and Austin Sindrick at plus 125. I also have Lagana over Elliott, Lagana over Bubba, which was my best bet at minus 130. I have Ross over Denny at plus 140. Uh, Kyle Bush over Martin Truex, uh, Briscoe over Byron just because of that plus 185 number, and Kyle Bush as your top Toyota. Brian Twining, break down your card, give the people a best bet. All right, I'm going extremely heavy on the outrights this week, more so about the numbers than anything, but uh, I took Christopher Bell, Kyle Bush, Ryan Blaney, and William Byron earlier in the week, and all of them except for Bell, like uh, their numbers shrank a little bit. I added Chris Busher, Eric Jones, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., to the outright card, all because their numbers are ridiculously long. And then in the top 10 market, Eric Jones, Ricky Spinhouse Jr., Michael McDowell, and I added a Justin Haley top 10 at nine to one, which the number is crazy. And my best bet from earlier in the week was Kyle Busch to finish ahead of teammate Martin Truex Jr. And I also have a William Byron top Chevy at five to one. With that being said, what is your best bet as we sit here at 8.30 West Coast time on on Saturday night? Well, it, the number is still the same. I feel just as strongly now as I did before in the week because he qualified right where I was expecting him to run. And that's going to be Michael McDowell in the top 10 at seven to one. You can still get that number. I'm going to make this a three unit play. He's been running too strong of late to ignore him. I think that he's going to put together another strong performance tomorrow at the track and cash the seven to one ticket. That'd be a hell of a hit, my friend. Uh, I am going with the Austin Cinder top 10 that is somehow at plus money. Uh, thank you, FanDuel. You are the best. Uh, plus money on a guy who looked awesome in practice, who looked awesome in qualifying. We'll be starting second tomorrow. Um, as long as he can keep the wheels on the track, I think he'll be able to finish in the top 10 and have a really nice performance. That is Brian Twining. I am Kyle Robert. Once again, if you are liking the show, uh, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, all that stuff. We will be back in our normal studios back uh, on Wednesday, recapping everything that happened, and we'll be in your feed Thursday morning. Um, if you see us at the track, come say hello. If you see us on TV, please send us a screenshot. That is Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the race, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.